We need to get to the third floor. We can make our way to the server room from there. You can run, scum, but you can't hide! What was that? Investigate. Investigating. They should have detected us by now. Taking out this door. Receiving They're on to you. Get out. Get out of there! Invisible Inc. is a turn-based strategy stealth game about a top-secret agency in the year 2074. Mega corporations have overthrown the world's national governments, so you must operate a team of elite agents on a series of missions to gain intel, steal weaponry and software to gain the upper hand. Yes, it's a daunting task, but you have one big weapon up your sneaky spy sleeve, a sophisticated AI system known as Incognita. Pattern resolution at 50%. Hex, the first thing I noticed about this game was its brilliant art style. It's a beautifully designed game with all of the animation, level design and menus helping to set a really exciting scene. Yeah, it feels sharp and authentic, doesn't it? Tactical games such as this can often feel a bit drab and techy, but there's a slickness to the detail here that makes every action so exciting. Being secret agents, the game relies heavily on stealth. You can move a certain number of spaces in each turn, making use of a peak function to unveil the fog of war as you move from room to room without being spotted. In each mission, you'll of course have a main objective, like obtain some augments for incognita or recover some information. But going out of your way to access every locked door and hack every corporate safe will land you with loads of credits to spend on upgrades, which are invaluable. Another element to manage is power. You'll need this to use Incognita for the hefty hacks, like safes, alarms, and security cameras, so you have to factor in visits to power terminals in your turns as well. In some of the more complicated levels, there's a lot that needs hacking, but you've only got limited power, so you have to be very strategic about how you use those power points. We don't have visibility on the hallway. You'll have to manually check for hostiles. There's a great tutorial to get you started, and the game eases you in with a few fairly simple levels. In addition to taking out security cameras to remain unseen, you'll also need to factor in guards' line of sight. Inve hey, intruder! Guards can be knocked out and pinned oh, to the floor, or you can lure them towards you with an ambush maneuver. Mm, guess it was nothing. But occasionally you'll find yourself in checkmate and you'll just get shot. If an agent goes down, you can either try and get your other agent over there to revive them, or you can just drag them to the exit if you're lucky enough to have found it and be close enough to it. Otherwise, they're gone for good. Damn it, operator. Be more careful with our assets. I like that you've got the option to rewind a number of turns depending on the level of difficulty you choose, which is a nice safety net to rely on while you're still learning the ropes. Yeah, the default for beginner is five rewinds, which I think is a good number for anyone who isn't a pro in this genre, but there are loads of ways to make it much tougher for veterans too. Each agent has a number of skills and augments to use, which you can add to and upgrade throughout the game. Augment installed. I didn't make much use of these at first, but they become lifesavers once you get to the tougher levels. Yeah, it gets crazy, doesn't it? <laughs> With each turn, the security level increases. More guards will appear. Additional guard controls. Cameras you've hacked get reclaimed, and if you've used up most of your power store, you have limited options when you're trying to make it through a minefield alive. Investigating. Stop. Yeah, it's tough because your natural instinct is to split up so you can cover more ground and complete your main objective more quickly. But then you have the task of trying to get one character back to the other who is near the exit. And with each turn, the path is fraught with more danger. Yeah, at one point I had an agent that had found the payload but didn't have the security pass to unlock it. Warning. Then my other agent found it, but of course she was on the other side of the map. Suddenly there were bugs that deployed if I made too much noise, drones that prevented me from hacking anything. I mean, if you aren't smart about the efficiency in which you get through the map, the security just gets too high and you'll find yourself trapped. I love how it's that classic Metal Gear alarm sound when you're spotted too. <laughs> so stressful. Bring. Intruder! Yeah, the guards are great and they're all like looking around trying to sniff you out. Another thing to keep in mind is that incapacitated guards will only stay down for three turns. You can pin them to the spot if you stay put, but it's easy to forget about them while you're poking around the rooms, and suddenly they're on your tail again. There are abilities to keep in mind too. 
There is a cloaking skill that comes in handy, but probably the most invaluable tool that I found was the sprint, particularly after you've upgraded your agent's speed. Hey, investigating. You can use it to move through high awareness areas quickly without being spotted. I mean, there was one level that was quite literally a race to the end, Bajo. I had no power to hack anything, it was just a mad dash for survival. It was unbelievably nerve-wracking. Yeah, this game gets so intense, doesn't it? This is such a good example of tactical turn-based strategy wrapped up in a polished package. Yeah, and what's so great about it is that it's complex and deep enough for even the most hardened of strategy players. And yet they've included the tools there to make it accessible to newcomers as well, which is rarely the case for this genre, I think. One thing I would have liked is just a bit more variety in the look and feel of each place. In the menu, you see your agents supposedly flying all over the world, but each level looks pretty much identical to the last one. Yeah, that's fair. It is the future though, so I think they get away with everything looking a little bit more homogenized. Other than that though, there isn't much to criticize really. What are you giving an overall hex? I found this deeply satisfying to play, Barjo. I highly recommend it. Even if you wouldn't consider yourself a fan of this genre, give Invisible Ink a try, because I think you might be surprised. I'm giving it four and a half out of five stars. I'm giving it four stars. We've got work to do. And if you'd like to see more Invisible Ink, Nick Boy did a playthrough on Pocket last week, which you can watch online. Okay, your turn you to get Zap. Magnificent. Excellent. Excellent work, Nick.